you're here. Do it. You know, it's not like anything else different. So what the hell? You know, it's you love that person. You care about that person, all that kind of stuff. You know, so keep it up, young man. You can go far. But back to what you're saying, so I don't can't go rambling off again. Yeah. I caught myself um, for the but, first time. What the fuck's wrong uh, with that picture, right, Lane? I grew up so okay. fast. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here comes smart ass. Hello, welcome to Metaverse Steejen. I'm Lane. I'm an old man raptor, and our guest is. Yo, Noved player. Oh. How y'all doing? Thank you very much for joining us, Novid. It's a, it's an absolute honor to have yes. you on finally. So thank you for your for your time. Yes. Oh. Yeah. No. It, it, it's it's definitely a blessing. Uh, no, I'm very honored to be a part of uh, Metaverse DJ. And, uh, it, was, it was really cool. I do appreciate you guys inviting me on. No big deal. So what is it you're known for here in the virtual world, and how did you get started? Um. So. Quite a few things, actually. Um, so mainly, uh, I work with a bunch of different types of bigger events when it comes to VR chat, uh, like Project Community or, or Avi Fair. Uh, I'm also uh, known as the VR chat barber shopper. Um, you know, singing barbershop acapella harmonies. Uh, I also do different types of content creation, uh, like uh, TikToks and shorts. Uh, and of course, uh, as you guys both know, uh, I also run the Noved Notes podcast. Oh, wow. Sounds like you're up to quite a lot, man. How'd you get started with all that? You sound like a very busy bee. Like he's got his, he's got his hand in every fucking pie and he's just going, I like the plum and I don't like Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So getting started, um, I guess I started playing VR chat back in probably about 2019 on desktop. Uh, and something that just stuck with me was meeting people and learning what they do on this platform uh, and kind of learning, you know, what it takes to do some of the projects. Um, and I've just gotten to know like a bunch of, you know, small to bigger communities and, you know, it just kind of progressed from there. Hmm. So. Let's start with one of the things I know you, uh, do. You're very passionate about. You, what? What is? What do you mean by you're a barber shopper? And how did you get started there? Yeah, yeah. So barber shop. Um, it's essentially a old genre. Um, you know, from around the 1920s, maybe a little bit earlier. Depends on what type of history you look at. Uh, I got started based. Uh, so. I do sing IRL with these barbershop uh, groups and about 2016, 2015 uh, was when I f first joined uh, the chorus that I currently direct. Uh, um, my family has a bunch of different history when it comes to barbershoppers, uh, one of which being uh, the Ambassadors of Harmony. Uh, they, they've, uh, Doc is his name. Uh, he, he was a barber shopper and a, uh, ambassador of harmony before I was. And I remember at a very young age, just being, just being able to, you know, understand what it's like to be a barber shopper. And essentially it just kind of grew from there over the years. And I started doing, officially started doing barber shop up about like 2015, 2016, uh, in an actual group. Uh, and then kind of progressed from there and. Uh, now I'm a director of a chorus and a gold medalist with uh, another chorus. <laughs> wow. That's oh, quite wow. impressive, man. <laughs> no doubt. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's, it's definitely, a, definitely a different experience because um, I'm a part of two groups. One that I direct, which is, you know, it's a great chorus. And then you have the ambassadors of harmony which is the other group i sing with which is the international competition side of it uh and it's two different ballparks so it's definitely um two sides of the same coin but it's two very very different experiences mm. well i learned two things in the last few minutes one barbershop is a genre two there's a competition <laughs> how <laughs> how's the competition run uh, so 
competition it's held uh in a few different stages so you'll have your uh district contest which is essentially your local area like uh usually within a few states range so for example i'm in what's known as the central states district uh which is like kansas uh, missouri um a little bit of illinois iowa uh and i think there's one more i might be missing so it starts at the district level and uh, you'll have uh, competitors from all, like quartets and choruses from those states and areas, you know, come together in one place and compete in front of like judges and a crowd. Uh, and then once you pass uh, the district level, you'll go on to the international level. Um, that's only there's only two ways to go to the international level. You have to make a certain score um, based off of singing performance and musicality, mm. uh, or you compete in the spring uh, central or the spring districts. So there's the fall districts and the spring districts. Uh, if you usually the fall districts, if you place number, you know, if you place first place or if you hit a certain score, uh, you're usually good to go. And then there's a the spring. So if you don't hit that score, or, or you just don't compete in the fall districts, you still have a chance to go to the international contest. Uh, so the international contest is not only from the United States, but it's also from like Sweden, Germany, um, like all a bunch of different countries across the world. Um, obviously, hence the name international. And, you know, they'll all come together in one place, um, usually in the United States. Uh, and then they'll essentially have that competition and it's about a, it's about a whole week period, um, versus the district contest, which is only a three day period. Um, and it's, it's a huge event where a bunch of different, you know, people of different styles come together and sing barbershop harmony. And it's definitely, it's definitely a really cool, it's definitely a cool thing. <laughs> mm, sounds it. Wow. Well, thanks for sharing that. I I didn't know anything about that, but I appreciate it. How? Why do you continue doing barbershop quartet? May I ask? Um. So with barbershop harmony in particular, um, it's no different than joining a regular chorus or a instrumental ensemble. You know, you 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 feel like a family. You know, when performing, it, it's it's, you know, with my courses in particular, you know. It's a family. It's a brotherhood. Um, you just have fun with it. Um, and, you know, it's not about one of the biggest things that we preach in Ambassadors of Harmony. You know, it's not about the trophy or the, you know, the winning. Like, yeah, it's nice. But, you know, to put on a performance that the person can enjoy to the most uh, extent, you know, like one of one of, uh, one of the things we do is to um make the audience feel something mm. you know in the sense of like we one of our biggest things like because the ambassadors are so well known you know we we get recognized a lot like you know we we get a high praise which is nice but we don't let that get to our heads because you know we, we want them to experience music at its core mm. um at least that's what i believe but when it comes to, you know, why, why I keep doing it, it's just to give people an experience that, you know, essentially they won't forget. And small, small side story, when it comes to that, um, one of my first international contests with them, uh, we had performed uh, a Charlie Chaplin medley uh, for our contest set. And one of the things I will never forget uh, was this very kind elderly lady came up to me after our performance and uh, she, she told me it was one of the best performances she'd ever seen. Like she was, cause she lived around the era of, you know, Charlie Chaplin and whatnot. Like she, she was very familiar with the Charlie Chaplin series. Uh, so for our uptune, we did the Charlie Chaplin medley. And then the second set was uh, true colors. Um, because everybody was covered in grayscale, like face paint and uh, makeup. So like we tried to fit the description of, you know, the Charlie Chaplin era. And one of the biggest things with that set was, you know, when we swapped from the, the medley, uh, like the life can be like a movie song and a bunch of other songs, we went into true colors and it became a more somber story um, where this homeless child, you know, and Charlie Chaplin meet 
and you know we start singing true colors and then at the very end you see like a giant rainbow of like ties pocket squares like it's the first time you see any color Mm -hmm. um it's more you know it's giving sentimental value to a piece of music uh is definitely one of the things that i i love to keep barbershop going to say the least oh Thanks for actually answering the next question without me actually asking, like, what did you mean by how do you want people to feel something? But it sounds like you've already explained it. That's that's a very good reason for wanting to continue to do it. Wow. Wow, he's ahead of you for once? Oh, my God. we got to have this guy back more (laughs) often. Yeah, it's crazy. We don't get that very often before questions. (laughs) Holy crap. Keep it up, Nova. Don't stop now. How did you... (laughs) How did you get into a uh, barbershop in the first place? What got you started with it? So, uh, I've, I've known barbershop kind of since like that, since a long time, uh, it mainly started just by going to YouTube and, you know, cause I was a big choir kid in high school. Um, you know, and I, I loved the acapella style so i started to learn more about acapella styles and barbershop is you know one of the original um besides like gregorian chant um barbershop is one of the first harmonic acapella styles out there um and it just kind of stuck with me and you know with of course like i said uh my family being barbershoppers already that kind of also influenced me to become a barbershopper as well um but yeah i've been i've been a big fan of barbershop probably since middle school probably this is like way long ago um but yeah not as long as raptor but you know um (laughs) but uh (laughs) he's even had me giving you shit i like him already (laughs) yeah yeah no doubt i got a question i got a question for you what's the difference between the two between the what you just explained, I can't oh, pronounce them. Between I'm Gregorian chant and barbershop. Shop. Uh yeah. So with so with Gregorian chant, it's uh the best way to phrase Gregorian chant is essentially like um it's non harmonic, like there's no harmony. It's essentially uh speaking words in a singing voice, essentially. The the easiest way to put it. Um, meanwhile, barbershop, you'll have your, like your harmony, your melodic line with your harmony. Gregorian chant is just a single, uh, melodic line. That's essentially either chanted or sang. Um, there's no, uh, best way I can say it, there's no flavor to it. You know, there's no interesting harmonics, um, or, you know, rhythms. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, with barbershop, you know, you add like. Uh, different chord structures, different polyrhythms. Um, I'm, I'm going to go into music theory here, but, go <laughs> but ahead. You, get, you know, you go into different, uh, you go into different, you know, rhythms. Like you'll have, uh, you know, one melody doing one, you know, melody. Meanwhile, the other one's doing a completely separate melody. You know, you'll have, um, and that's not always the case, but it does happen. And you'll have like, you know, your different chords, like your typical barbershop uh, seventh chord. Uh, and then you'll get into the more crazy chords, like ninth chords, 11th chords, 13th chords, uh, diminished seventh. You know, it, it, it's there's barbershop specifically when it comes to the musicality of it. It's a lot more complex. Um, mm. it, that, that's probably one of the better things about it. Or one of the main okay. differences, I should say. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Have, I've got two questions for you now. One, what did you mean by like 13th and 9th chords? And how does Barbershop differ from like other choirs or acapella groups as well? So to answer the first question, uh, let's talk chords. So your your standard chord uh, is going to be your 1, 3, 5, and then high 1 or 8. Um, you know, like, dum, bum, bum, bum. I'm, oh. I'm not, I'm not awake enough to do that, but it's fine. You know, you'll have your standard chord. Like, for example, you know, if you took like, let's say C major, um, you'll have C, E, G, and then a high C, the octave high C. That's your normal major chord. 
And then you'll have your minor, which is, you know, like C, E, uh, C, E flat, G, C. So it gives you more of a somber, you know, tone. Uh, and to kind of fast forward, um, you'll have your, what's called the barbershop seventh chord. So if we were going to use that uh, C major again, it'd be C, E, G, B, hmm. um, which is that seventh, because C is your one, B would be your seven in the uh, scale of C. Uh, that's your going to be your barbershop seventh, uh, or dominant seventh chord, which, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, when it comes to like ninth chords, you know, you'll have like, uh, you'll have C, E, G, and then, um, you'll have a D. So C, E, G, and then D, which if you're looking at the C major scale from C being one and then C being high one or eight, your nine would essentially be D or two is essentially how that would work. And then it goes on and on and on and on. Um, and what's cool about barbershop um, when it comes to these advanced chords, you know, they'll make very hard dissonance. Uh, and then usually there's a phrasing of mu uh, musicality that will resolve into, you know, a, either a brand new key like transition to a new key, or it'll go back to that, uh, you know, that major, you know, essentially a major five or a major one chord, depending on the, depending on the song. Um, that's, that's one of the big things about barbershop versus regular acapella. Um, with acapella, it's more freestyle mm. in the sense of like, you have your, you have your groups like pentatonics, home free, um, you know, those are more, those are acapella because they, they'll have like beatboxers. They'll have, um, the melodic line transitioning throughout the parts with barbershop. Um, the, the typically the, the melody will stay in the lead part. Um, so the way the voicing of a barbershop quartet, for example, uh, from bottom to top, you'll have your bass, you'll have your baritone, then you'll have your lead or tenor two, and then you'll have your high tenor. So your melody typically stays within that, you know, lead two part. Now, not to, it's not to say that it can't switch to like, you know, let's say the tenor part or the bass part. Um, but in traditional barbershop, um, it'll stick with that that lead two or, or that tenor two or the lead part. Mm. Um, that's essentially some of the main differences when it comes to acapella versus barbershop. Oh. Interesting. I, I learned a whole bunch of stuff in music theory. Um, I'm going <laughs> to whiplash this into a different direction as well. You mentioned you're with two groups we've talked with prior, Project Community and Abbey Fair. How did you get involved with them and what do you do with them? Um, so with, uh, <laughs> so with uh, Project Community in particular, um, I, I had learned about it um through an old convention called vrcon uh and due to some uh unforeseen events uh vrcon essentially disbanded uh and, and i still wanted to work with the people that were working with vrcon uh and that's essentially afterward uh it took a little bit but project community was made afterward and uh i became a moderator uh and media team member for them uh in that order actually and yeah, so that essentially blossomed. That was just by, you know, meet, wanting to meet the people and essentially wanting to work with them. Uh, and then I had to take, uh, long story short, I had to take a hiatus uh, um, for reasons. And then uh, I learned about Avi Fair. Uh, and, you know, I was like, oh, this would be cool to make a video about. So I made a video and then they were interested. Uh, and then I essentially started working for them as a... Uh, the head of media and uh and public relations so it just kind of just kind of blossomed into its own accord <laughs> oh wow um what made you want to join and stick with avi fair um it was definitely it was definitely a faster pace um with avi fair you know it it definitely uh it definitely filled kind of like an experience gap um, because with project community um, love you guys um, <laughs> they, you know, they had a giant, they have a big team. 
Um, meanwhile, with Abbey Fair, it's a lot smaller, more condensed team, um, mainly because it's a smaller size event. And it's uh, it's definitely a different experience. Um, so, you know, to stay with Abbey Fair was, you know, it, it definitely was uh, more, I guess, I guess, more wholesome in a way. Mm. Um, granted, the the hiatus with Project was not really a choice. There's um, there's not the reasons I won't go into, mm. um, but there's a possibility of uh, going back in the few in the very near future. But that's that's a talk for another time. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So let's lead into, you said you do media and videos. You do your own content and your own podcast. What sprouted that as well? Um, so when it came to uh, the content side, uh, before the podcast was even remotely on my mind, um, there I've seen so many creators uh, in this platform. Uh, uh, one of the main one of the used to be main types of content I would do would be barbershop related. So I would essentially take myself and uh, essentially do four different voice parts uh, and then and essentially do what's called the barbershop tag, uh, which barbershop tags to briefly explain, it's uh, usually a uh, end bit of a barbershop song that rings chords. And essentially it sounds like a mini song. Mm. Um, to to put it in put to put it in English for uh, those that are not as uh, <laughs> attuned to the barbershop style, but essentially like it's a mini song that's usually at the end of a barbershop piece, and usually they have uh, you know either simple or complex chord structures that make the chords ring. And uh, I started doing that uh, because of, you know with barbershop being one of my passions, uh, and then I started. Um, delving more into the actual VR chat community side, uh, making some ha ha funny meme, uh, and then working with you know bigger communities, just uh, like making uh, the like a certain film festival, like with Project Lens, I made a trailer short for them. It's just kind of been a learning experience that I I have. There's not a single day where I don't learn something new. Mm. Um. And it's just kind of me trying to find where I don't like sticking to one particular thing and sticking. Um, so I'm always trying to venture out into new different types of territory when it comes to content creation. Um, now, as for the podcast side, um, the podcast thing has been on my mind probably ever since I started doing VR chat. Um, but it was more of like, do I have the means or the willpower uh, to do so? And one night uh, after uh, lots of unfortunate IRL things happened, uh, I decided I was done, you know, being upset with myself. And I, was, I told my, my friend Gear, um, who was on my first episode of my podcast, I was like, I want to start a project, you know, that's been you know, on my mind since I started this platform, you know, and it's a lot has changed since when I started to now, you know, let's just, let's do a podcast. And of course, like I, at that, like before that time, you know, I knew about you guys, I knew about like the creator VR podcast um, and some of the other podcasts that are on this platform, you know? So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, you know, be me. I'm not going to try to copy the style of anybody. Like if people watch awesome, if people don't, I'm having fun doing it. Mm. You know, it's, it's not about, it wasn't, it wasn't ever about the numbers. It was just about me experimenting with what I want to do and essentially have fun doing the process. Okay. So now that you're about seven episodes in now, how do you feel about do doing the whole podcasting thing yourself? Um, definitely, definitely a learning experience to say the least. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, um, yeah, no, I, if anything, it gives me a higher respect to, you know, you guys and, uh, other podcast creators. Cause th with the, with a different style that I try to run, um, also me like just being self doubtful and, you know, me being egotistical against my own self. Um, I always try to improve each episode the best of my ability, um, you know, because there's always something that can be fixed. 
uh, like, you know, for example, uh, <laughs> one of the things that I always do uh, at the end of the episodes, I always say, and I'm going to keep doing it because it's just trained in my brain for some reason. But I always say, you know, we'll see you in the next episode when it's only myself. I'm the only one running the staff, you know, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, it's just it's force of habit, um, you know. So it's a, it's definitely with a podcast, it's definitely a learning experience. Um, and it's, it's been fun. I, there's not an episode that I've done yet that I have, you know, I don't think there'll ever be an episode that I dread or regret because they're just fun and they're entertaining to do. Um, and it really doesn't feel like an hour, you know, which is, which is very, uh, very kind to say the least. (laughs) Hmm. Well, what was, uh, some of your, uh, doubts into jumping into the whole doing podcasting thing, may I ask? Um, definitely, and this kind of goes with the whole self-doubt thing, uh, there was, long story short, there's there was some drama that, you know, uh, happened within the VR chat community, uh, as well as some IRL stuff that was going on. So at the time, I was just at a very low depression uh, in my life. And uh, essentially, without, uh, and I'm, I'm going to name drop these two, with Vanessa Wolf and Gear Gabo uh, specifically, if it weren't for those two, I probably would not be on this platform anymore. I'd probably maintain focus on my IRL stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they essentially stuck it with me and um, essentially kept me, kept my inspiration to keep going and to keep making content. Um, One of my big, one of my definitely big things is, you know, I always believe that even if it's good or great in what I do, there's always room to improve, which is why I always ask for opinions. You know, Um, I'll ask like some of my friends like, hey, what do you think of this? You know, how, you know, how would you change it specifically? Um, You know, because with this platform and what I've done, there's without the people that I've worked with and the people that I've gotten to know without all them i would not be where i'm at today Mm. plain simple none of none of this none of this stuff was self-done um even if even if like the barbershop tags on vr chat like i had to learn how to um film vertically and you know how to multi-track it um the multi-tracking i knew before vr chat but to essentially record myself in vr chat in a vertical format and being able to you know, edit it without it being all, you know, wonky. You know, I, I, I learned how to do that from another player, uh, from another person. Mm. So it, there's nothing like, a, yeah, there's nothing that I've done that I haven't learned from the VR chat community itself. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fair. May I ask what multi-tracking is? Because I haven't heard the term before. Yeah, so multi-tracking, um, and this is how all my TikToks are made. Uh, essentially, like, I'll, I'll do one for example. Um, so with the barbershop tag specifically, um, and you, you, you may have seen these videos on YouTube and may not have just known that that's what's called. So if, you, if you're on YouTube and you watch, like, acapella artists, like, solo acapella artists, they'll essentially take, you know four different videos of them singing and essentially layering it onto each other. That's mm-hmm. essentially multi-tracking. Um, you know, so for example, like when using a barbershop tag example, I'll have, I'll sing like in front of my camera, I'll sing the melody line and um, then I'll stop hit rec- uh, or stop the recording, do it again. And then I'll sing the tenor part. And then, you know, repeat with the baritone, the bass part. And essentially with multi-tracking is I put those together, you know, to have a four part harmony, you know, that's, that's essentially what multi-tracking is essentially layering on different recordings to get a final product. Mm. Interesting. Um, so with you mentioned earlier, you're always trying to improve. What were some of the, uh, most interesting or difficult things that you had to improve on and how did you overcome that scenario? Ooh, uh, definitely one of the biggest things and it's not really 100% my fault it's just uh, I'm broke uh, (laughs) is trying to record high to somewhat high quality content um, 
mainly because uh, unlike most like P, uh, PC VR players, uh, I don't have a good computer. I, I run everything. Everything that I've done so far has been on a HP Victus gaming laptop. Um, so to essentially learn how I can make uh, high quality content from a VR headset that's connected to a laptop um, was definitely one of the struggles starting out. Um, and it was definitely a learning process because you you have to not only um, change certain settings within the headset, but also change certain settings within VR chat. Um, or, you know, what I've done recently is pick up what's called VRC Lens, um, which is essentially, you know, a camera system that you can change, like, uh, the focus, the exposure. Essentially, VRC Lens is a huge camera system, like, they can add to an avatar uh and it definitely that's definitely uh, one that you have to like learn as you go um because it there's a lot to it <laughs> um so one of the one of the struggles being essentially just learning how to improve the quality of the content despite the lack of um performance related items like that mm. most people use hmm okay and what were some of the changes you made in order to give that higher quality performance or content? Um, smack my computer a bunch. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, th this computer has definitely seen better days. Um, granted, I my uh, headset noise gates a little bit fine, but uh, it's currently you know it's putting in the work <laughs> to say the least. And um, something that I've learned, uh, especially when it comes to the Quest Three headset uh, and Quest Two headset that I had, um, you got to be really delicate to your cords. <laughs> um, luckily, I have the warranty on mine, so there a lot of times because it, it gets so much use out of it. Um, I'll have to go out and swap a cord because the cord will start to go bad and, you know, it'll affect my Steam VR and it's a whole, whole process, you know. Um, so essentially just making sure things are fine on the technology side. Um, it's, it's getting to a rhythm at this point. Like every some odd months, I have to check it to make sure it's okay. Um, and then... You know, just kind of experimenting with, you know, VR chat settings, with OBS settings, um, you know, don't, and this is one of the advice I give to, because I've, I've had people come to me for advice, you know, and I always tell them, don't be afraid to experiment with your settings. You know, there's, there's settings that work for certain people. Um, like one of the examples, it's funny because I actually used this uh, example recently when I was, because uh, somebody was asking me a bunch of questions regarding uh, content creation. Um, you know, with the world I use for my podcast, it has its own built in camera system, you know, um, which is very convenient. You know, it, you got to find what works for you, you know, whether it's, you know, how you guys run yours with the camera pin system or, you know, whether you use a higher edge um like vrc lens you know it, it you just have to learn what makes what works for you not what makes you what works for you mm. you know and then just r run with it mm. i'm pretty sure i may have dodged that question what was the question again <laughs> <laughs> oh boy I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I was throughout the way it's saying I forgot what the question was. <laughs> oh, Don't what mind happens? me. I'm gonna jump in the water and hopefully I can swim. Oh my gosh! You know, I have another question for you in regards to your podcast. What are some of the highlights or things you've learned by by the episodes you've done so far from the people you've had on? Ooh, okay, that's a good question. Um, oh man, that's a really good question. So when it comes to so far, the people I've interviewed, um, and this has already been something that was in my mindset, um, going into this podcast, it doesn't matter what your numbers are, you know, what you create deep down, every one of us is just a normal human being. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and when it, when it comes to that, you know, uh, um, 
like for example uh in the most recent episode when this was being recorded um which was episode seven which is with show pal um you know kind of understand where his mindset was when it was you know creating worlds and you know what drove what drove him to you know inspire his worlds based off of like real life events um just kind of understanding the mindset of what inspires people and how they grow over time um is definitely one of the amazing things i've learned um because you know we all started realistically we all started from you know the same ground zero um you know it's just a everybody has their own path of you know growth and experience so to kind of uh, as much as i can because uh there's been a, all all of the episodes there's been times where uh <laughs> we didn't hit all the topics that were wanting to be hit and uh i could easily if i really wanted to make a episode two um but that's for future um future episodes but it's uh it's definitely one of the biggest things i've learned when it comes to the guests is you know what how how infinite the vr chat platform is when it comes to you know growth and you know stuff like that it's uh it's definitely it's definitely crazy in some regard <laughs> hmm. in terms of what you've done so far with it was your experience with a podcast what you expected going into it um i'm gonna say no only only for the main reason of uh it's it's wanting to give that unique style um you know i essentially wanted um i essentially wanted to give a platform for my guests um cuz you know i'll i'll promote it within the vr chat community but i i also want to push it outside of the vr chat community give give more edge to like people maybe interested in vr in general or you know people that are interested in certain types of aspects like you know the role play communities because you'll have role play communities irl on console games you know on pc games you know so to uh for i think it was episode three with yuki you know to give kind of a, an experience you know what it's like to role play as a coach no yakuza you know in a vr mindset um you have to while it's nice to have you know just talking about it one of my one of the reasons why i do the style i do is you know i like to give visual representation to some avail granted it does come with a lot of editing i will say but um to just kind of give it that visual effect um, so people have a visual representation as well is just something that I, at least I believe, um, is more beneficial, which is what, uh, which benefits me a lot. Mm. Okay. Um, I got a question line. Two. I got a question. Hello. I'm going to quickly interrupt your video. Please come follow us on any of our socials. We have a card down that way in the description, metaversedjcard.co. You can find us on discord. You can find us on Twitter, which X, whatever, right here in this space, you'll see the at. You can find me, Lion, and as well, we have a Patreon, which we've started a whole other show as a thank you for those who've signed up, such as Training Fangs, Vid and Zero, and Niche. So thank you all for watching the video on how these games are going. I'll leave you to the rest of it. Enjoy. Since you've been sitting here and you do broadcasts, how, what's it feel to be on the other side being the person that's being interviewed? That's, uh, it's definitely different. I, it's, it's definitely, uh, in a very wholesome way, it's, uh, it's different. You know, I never, never thought to expect to get interviewed by you guys. Um, cause I know, I know when I, uh, and it, it's one of those self doubt moments, you know, cause like, uh, unfortunately it's a very very small percentage um of the community but you'll have 
your toxic communities and you know uh if someone is doing your style of content you know they may see you in a bad light as trying to copy them or whatnot um but you guys are very welcoming um first and foremost you guys are very very welcoming um even with the the funny name drop on my on the teaser trailer for the podcast um i was very i was i was glad that you guys are laughing and giggling about it uh when you guys saw that um it made me feel a little bit more safer, you know, wanting to do the podcast. Um, but to be, to be interviewed is definitely a different, it's definitely a different feeling. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those, I was like, yeah, they know what they're doing. I don't gotta worry about it. But now I'm like thinking about some of these questions. I'm like, yeah, like that's, that's a really good question. So it's, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's nice to be interviewed. It feels, it feels good. Um, Gives me a new mindset when going into future episodes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can very much agree with you there. Being in the opposite side of of the seat here is a very oh, interesting oh experience. My. Raptor and I have both been there a couple of times and it oh, is shit. definitely if, interesting. It fucking just it just blows your fucking mind that you're going, um, we meant. Usually he's asking the questions. I'm being the smart ass. And now I'm getting the question asked to me. And I go on tandems big time. If you ever seen some of them, I just go ape shit and everything else like this. Cause I'm trying to put myself out there because, you know, I'm in the hot seat and it's weird. It, you, you get a weird vibe down the back of your neck and the hair stands up here. And I see what you get and you're going, wow, are we this? We're not bad. We're just, curious and now everybody else is curious about us so it's a complete different zone you're going shit i think i just jump in the water and swim yeah i see what you're getting it's weird feeling no it is <laughs> yeah it definitely is <laughs> yeah no it's it's definitely different to say the least I can't be really, you know, hypothetical with the jumping in the water, but, you know, I, I get that. <laughs> it sounds like you just want to go for a swim, Raptor. <laughs> mm. Well, if you haven't seen some of our videos, usually somebody's kicking me or punching me or throwing me in the water or just watching them to see how far I can, like a hockey puck, see how far I can hit the goal. You know, what the hell? If it, well, you, know. you know, it's all in fun, and there it is. <laughs> now that you oh, mentioned God, here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> Well, yeah. since, Fuck, since none we of go. them mentioned they want to put your avatar in a paper airplane, we should also add a paper boat so you can float around the water and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, my luck, I'd be out there and all of a sudden a big battleship would come by and just go... Oh, did you hit the water mine? Oh, it didn't go boom, did it? Yeah. Yeah, it just bumped us, sir. It's okay. Our ship ain't going to do any damage. It just went on by. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, boy. Yeah. This stuff. It's great. It, I can understand where you're coming from, where you're the only one, but have you ever thought of bringing somebody else in as assistants to do like what me and Lion have? Not to say copy, but just have the, that ability to have that extra thought process. Oh, yeah, a thousand percent. Um, you know, one of the one of the people I originally had in mind was the person on my first episode, uh, Gear Gabo, because um, he was actually with me, like I said, through all the stuff. And um, a, a lot of it has to do with uh, time scheduling um because you know and uh, you guys both know like when scheduling interviews and stuff you have to kind of depending on what time zone they're in or where in the world they are you kind of have to adjust to some avail um at least that's my I time to um, understand that oh shit i partied too much and raced too much on it in the night before yeah we go through <laughs> that a lot yes <laughs> yeah like you know it's yeah, Gear essentially was one of the first people. Um, granted, the lad's super busy um, with IRL, and um, he may or may not be um, on the verge of getting engaged as I'm speaking right now. So we'll see how that goes. Love you, Gear. Um, I know you're going to watch this. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
Wow, throw your friend out there going, dude's going to get hitched, man, and he's going to love it. I can tell. Uh, He's he's told me stories, and he's very happy with this uh, this significant other. No, I Um, hope things work out. I wasn't meaning it that way. No, 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 you're good. good. Yeah, 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 you know, it's one. If you ever had friends like that, you always, when it never fails, I've been married twice, and everything else like this, and you go and you see them and everything, and you, they, everybody gets cold feet when, when they get to that point of where they're both standing with the significant other. And you always, you know, and you go, you know, they, they'll come to you or somebody like that, or you're the best man. You go, you think I'm doing the right thing? And you go, dude, you know, you're here. Do it. You know, you know it's not like anything else different. So what the hell? You know, it's you love that person, you care about that person, all that kind of stuff. You know, so keep it up, young man. You can go far, but back to what you're saying, so I don't kid go rambling off again. Yeah. I caught myself um, for the but, first time. What the fuck's wrong uh, with that picture, right, Lane? He grew up so okay, fast. So. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here comes smart ass, smart so, ass over here. Yeah, shut up. Quit talking so goddamn much. Yeah, I got you. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, the main thing, um, and this is coming from somebody who does it solo. One of the main struggles I deal with is audio. Um, kind of making sure that my audio is not going from left ear to center, left ear to center. Um, and that's all about positioning on my end. Um, you know, and I've learned actually how to track audio to just, uh, it's not perfect because it's spatial audio, but I can at least edit to where it'll stay in the center, but it might get muffled here and there. Mm. Um, you know, so one of my main thoughts when it comes to having assistance was strictly for audio sake. There's um, actually an essentially... easier way for that. Here's a metaverse degen tip within the video editor. When you throw it in, you could switch it from stereo to mono mono sound. So instead of being stereo, I've done that too. It's a very easier way if you want an even between both of the headsets. It's it's one way to deal with it without having like having the cameraman sent per- perfectly in between two people and not move. At least that way you have a better a better way to do it. Mm-hmm. Or that or you could be like lying and record a whole 45 minutes the same forgot oh shit i forgot sound <laughs> oh look uh, i'm on so the wrong funny. mic <laughs> uh, i'm on so, the wrong mic yeah we've done he's so, done that so it, we, yeah it's for it's one of those things it just happens but it's funny so it's it's funny you mentioned that um specifically because episode six uh featuring wolveeps um they were recording the entire time and didn't uh didn't tell me um we got all the way through the hour-long episode and i realized my vrc lens was completely out of focus like it was it was completely blurred and and essentially the entire episode visually would have had to been reshot but they were also recording because uh with them being the media uh director uh over at project community you know she always likes to have a copy for herself so she actually sent me her copy of the version and it was the best audio quality episode i've ever put out because not only do i have my microphone audio but i have her microphone audio so that one while it did have a lot more editing to it, um, yeah, I made that similar mistake of uh, not checking my things before recording. Wow. And, uh... Hey, Lion, you know how much fun you could have with somebody out of focus? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fun. <laughs> I just thought about that. Lots of fun. That'd be all fine. You could have just done an episode with just a, with out of focus and just turned around and just did weird shit with it and just not to make it a funny towards the person but you could have actually had where it was on you and stuff like that you could have took the focus out but when it was on her it was clear and you could have really had a field day with that thing i would have had a blast <laughs> with it yeah no but I, I don't edit <laughs> i don't edit. yeah edit. Say, i it screwed was, up uh... so yeah, it was definitely a uh, interesting experience. It was a learning experience. Now I make sure to take ample time whenever I'm recording an episode. I'm like, okay, is this setting set? Is this setting set? Like, I'll have a checklist to make sure everything's hit. And if somehow I still manage to mess something up, I'm like, uh-huh. you didn't check the checklist, right you idiot. <laughs> yep, he does it all. Wow. 
You're looking at the checklist. Line, did you check this? Yeah, you got to sound right. Is the lighting right? Because we he uses the three cameras and set up. Is it too dark? You know, bring out the camera. Hey, I like this world. It's great. Oh, shit, it's too dark. So whenever I go, Lion, bring out the cameras. They're perfect for, you know, the <laughs> world is great and everything else. But when you have people that are wearing black outfits or too dark and all you look like is a glowing figure and going, Wow, that's great. It looks like a glow worm that went bad. You know, you got to go with that situation. So you, we we do it all the time. And I go, line, bring out the camera. It's a great world. But is the lighting just enough that it's going to pick us up and the, the person we're interviewing? And he goes, yep, it's great. Oh, and he goes, and we've had some worlds that nothing wrong with the world and everything else. It's just camera doesn't want to see us. And he goes, nope. Got to find a different one. So we, mm. we do a lot of world hopping there's, on top of it. So, there's but been it's a funny. few worlds that we, we've we really liked as like a aesthetic in the background. But because of the way the lighting is, it's like we're just a pair of glowing eyeballs. I was like, we can't see each other at this. Ah, <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> yes, even... real-time lighting. you got to love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Power mm. outage. Horrible. All you can see is their eyes. You got a flashlight? I'll just hold it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> funny you like mentioned, those cartoon episodes. Funny thing you mentioned. Yeah, you both of you mentioned the microphone thing. Since the few mishaps, if you ever like are watching one of the Metaverse DJ videos and I'm looking at my wrist, I'm using OVR checking the mics, make sure they both work. It's like, are they working? Good. Did, did it crash? Oh, wait. No, maybe. Okay. Is it working? <laughs> yeah. So, like, one of the one of the things I wish because of the uh, the laptop, I wish I could run OVR. I have OVR. It's just whenever I try to use it, it immediately lags me. Like mm. there's no escaping it. Um, and it's just because of my my specs. Uh, so whenever like if you watch some of the episodes, you'll see like I pan uh, the camera system over to them. I'll immediately go like this, like and raise my headset. Like I'll raise my headset like this, and I will look at my you know. Um, my OBS to make sure everything's recording properly, to make sure it's still recording, you know, uh, stuff like that, because it happens, you know, tech issues happen whether you like it or not. Um, so it's always good to like essentially be checking on things every now and then. I totally understand, you know, just having to having to get that security, you know, to make sure that things are working fine. Mm, can't have another moment where you sit down 45 minutes to an hour with the guest or oh look no one can hear the questions i'm asking <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i get that mm. well i'm not gonna lie you, you made me just look at my microphone to make sure i was using the right microphone <laughs> <laughs> oh shit is the shit working god damn it make up Makeup. I'm, I'm out of lighting too. Is that working right? Yeah. Yeah. You get somebody to come over with a gun. Yeah. Okay. We got to stop this makeup. I got to make sure you. Hey, at least you don't have to deal with that bullshit. But in real life, oh, the shadow is not just where it's supposed to. Somebody bring in another light. Yeah. At least you don't have to worry about that crap. You know, like they do in real in real life. But holy crime! I can imagine. You know, like I said, I you know I don't do much of the editing that line does but i'm there as a second you know Mm. he asked my opinion blah 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 and all this stuff and it's great you know it makes me feel like i'm more involved involved in it and everything else like this sometimes i throw ideas he goes yeah yeah, let's give that a shot and you know some of the backgrounds that he uses for some of the thumbnails and stuff like this and we have fun with it and that's what makes it work makes it worthwhile Mm. So, yeah, we have our blast and we have our funny moments. Thank God it's not being recorded. Eek. <laughs> wow, we'd be in some deep shit for some of the Shall crap that comes out of our mouths. Hey. and give people some examples? No! No, no. <laughs> not the sound pen. Not the sound pen. No, please. God, now you're going to go, hey, we're going to have a questionnaire at the bottom. Please feel, hey, I want to hear this sound bad. We're going to have that coming out of my ass. Mm. Then we'll have to get Wonka in here. And we'll be here for fucking next six weeks just on sound pad. 
You know what, Raptor? <laughs> Metaverse Dijon should have a brand new segment somewhere, ca- 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 kind of like the ad reels, where it's the Raptor clip of the day. <laughs> uh, shit. Make it to the TikTok. Fuck. YouTube oh, shorts. Oh, God. The Raptor, Raptor quote, quote of the day. Holy crap. I think we'd get banned for some of the crap that comes out of my fucking mouth. <laughs> And I'm just dicking around, you know. Yes, I, this old man gets a little foul mouth, worse than a sailor. But sometimes it's not that bad. It just, huh? People go, where do you come up with your shit? I don't know, just the top of my head. And I just run with it. So, yeah. Oh, oh man. Mm. So just I've... get a whole compilation of Raptor out of context moments. Oh, we got plenty of those oh, between God, Willie please. and I. We have probably enough to get going for the next couple yeah. of years of one Raptor clip a day. Although, as Raptor said, some <laughs> oh of them God. would get, would definitely get us in trouble, especially when it's early yes, in the I'm morning. Terrible. This guy hasn't slept. He has a few cups of coffee, gets all wound up, and just running the circles, spewing the first thing that comes off the top of his head. It's the funniest thing. If yeah, you've standing ever had a in front of a, <laughs> stand in front of the mirror. Co- I used to do it in Black Cat a lot, and that's when Wonka would come up behind me and not know. I know he's there, but you don't know if he's recording or nothing. And he's he's quiet. He just sits back and everything else like this. And I'm rattling off, and people come up. Are you okay? I'm just having fun with the mirror, man. And you know, I'm not just standing shaking my ass and everything. <laughs> I'm cussing at it, and I'm actually cussing at myself because I'm being a shit. And he's recording it behind me. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, there's a. Yeah. Funny thing is a few moments within our friend group were rapidly running his face and having just to look at me because sometimes I'll just go dead quiet and I'll just be staring at Raptor just to get those clips. Willie's got is a lot better at it yep, than he's... I am. He's got like four or five hundred oh, plus yeah. of just Raptor sound clips. I got my own file. <laughs> That's how bad it is. I've got my own file. Yeah, I got a folder with this mini in it. I'm going, oh, shit. And, and he has a bad habit at that of, point. Yeah, but he gets it where he cuts and pastes and crams them all together. So it's a full a set of small stuff. It's a long thing going all together. And you're going, where did I say that one at? I don't remember. Oh, shit. Yeah, I do. He'll make yeah. entire stories <laughs> or commercials with Raptor clips. Will he be sitting there hanging out, doing whatever? And you'll see him in his OVR cl- cl- clipping away. And just, he'll laugh to himself and go, hey, Raptor. And then start playing it. <laughs> He's My favorite is uh, a fake Raptor ice cream commercial that, that he clipped together that we can't play on the internet. Internet God. due to content. <laughs> yeah. Please don't. Please don't. Okay. Yeah, I'd be well, oh boy. Back off the subject and back into you. Before we kind of rattle off and go on our own tangent here, what have been some of your favorite moments from your your podcast? Oh man, uh, definitely just it's moments like these where you can just have fun, have conversations. You know, and it doesn't, you know, it, it makes, at least in my opinion, it makes not only me feel comfortable, but it makes the guests feel more comfortable. You know, I, I, I hate to be 100% scripted, you know, and it's not entertaining that way. So when, when things go into tangents, it makes it more smooth, more relaxed, you know, it's definitely, um, it adds ease in, into, you know, whoever is being interviewed as well as, you know, the people watching as well. Um, Definitely some of my favorite moments was, uh, <laughs> I'm putting favorite in air quotes, um, is constantly having to go through, um, you know, for example, some of the people that I worked with, they make so much content. And going through all of their content and essentially picking, choosing like, oh, which one best represents them? Um, like if it's not being talked about. Um, like if it's being talked about, I'll just grab that individual clip. But if it's not, like I'll, you know, and I also do it to myself when I, you know, I'll go into tangents, um, you know, like one of using the wool Eeps episode, for example, you know, I also mentioned that PJKT, uh, is recruiting, you know, and I'll slap that video on the screen. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely, in, uh, and I, I, it's anything I give more editing work to myself, 
um which is why it's like it's great but it's my favorite you know but definitely the the real favorite is definitely going into tangents and just kind of having a fun time you know mm. because that's all this is it's you know me essentially doing this for fun while giving my friends and you know homies creators you know essentially another platform to showcase their amazing stuff mm. i can definitely feel an understanding question for him one shoot i got a question i'm gonna give my famous famous one since you you were talking and everything else like this when you first came into vr for the very first time ran into a world that you all of a sudden you saw the weirdest shit and you said well i'm out what was the weirdest thing you ever saw oh okay that's a good question uh what's the weirdest weirdest world i've ever saw and i was like i'm out um so it doesn't exist anymore <laughs> um god there was i can't remember the name of it for the life of me um but it was one of those meme worlds um it was under community labs at the time uh and it was either community tabs or new in uh it was new worlds or whatever it was called back then uh and <laughs> oh i'm gonna out myself for even knowing remembering this um but it's it was uh <laughs> it was a club uh, of the 18 plus variety um that was all shrek themed <laughs> and I, I, it, was, it was the most it was the most it was the most weirdest shit that i have ever seen on this platform and it was really high quality too that's the worst part it wasn't like oh they just smacked you know shrek heads on things no like these were actual models like actual like uh, an actual club scene, like it was very disturbing. Um, <laughs> it, it also, it also made me, it also made me admire how much shit posting goes on in this uh, on this platform. <laughs> um, Lots. And, yeah, it had animations of certain characters like dancing on a pole, and I'm like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen, and it's kind of hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it was definitely one of those worlds that you can only be in there for so long and be like, all right, it's too weird, I'm out. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, you saying that reminded me of another Shrek theme world that's also equal in the top weirdest worlds. I for some reason also went on a Shrek tangent at one point. Look at Shrek worlds, and I found the sh a world that had Shrek in it taking a shit it's just just shrek shitting into the center that's all it was and i didn't know what i was getting into when i first got in the world and i think i invited rapper as soon as after i found it just to hear what he would say when he popped into it it's just the funniest thing you just see brown particles coming down at you with giant shreks bent over <laughs> <laughs> that's the Hey, that's you know what? Can, hey, if you're gonna, you gotta community if lives. you're gonna well if I drifted. If you're gonna enjoy something, you gotta make sure your buddies enjoy the same shit you're watching. Literally. <laughs> same oh, shit. 100%. You gotta bring them down with you, you know. I'm not going the ship ain't seeking one unless I got about twelve other people to see. You have a real demented freaking mind. What the fuck is wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing. I just thought you'd like this. Oh yeah, it's sure. great. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Hope I don't scan. Yeah, it's just fucking great. Yeah. You say that rapper <laughs> reminded me of of another world I saw that I actually did just that. I found a Rickroll world, and I think it was it was a city world. And when you look at it, it does not look like a Rickroll world at all. It looks like a city. And I went into it, and I got Rickrolled. The song's in the background. You see giant Rick Astley's dancing away in the background. My first thought is, I have to share this. And so I started inviting everybody <laughs> just to watch their response when they come into the world. And the number one is I got swore at. Why did you bring me here? What the fuck it is the funniest shit? And you know what they all did as soon as they spawned in? They started inviting their own friends. And the world got... Oh, filled <laughs> with hundreds fucking of loaded. fucking people and everyone would have stand around spawn all just watching their friends pop it it was the funniest thing <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. see, the thing is I, I would do something like that I would literally set up a camera and just record people's reactions just to see what would happen like that that's that's genius that's, that's, I love that 
I didn't record it. I was just being a little fucking shit. I thought it was the funniest thing bring in the a world. Ch- bring a troll. <laughs> I could bring yeah, a troll. Enough. You know, fair enough. That's the way yeah, it goes. That, yeah, no, that's that. Yeah, definitely. Before I started like actually doing recording, that sounds like something. Like if I ever found something of that caliper, I would definitely do the same. Because I did the same thing with the Shrek, uh, the Shrek Club. As I invited like my entire friends list at that time, I was like, "Hey, want to oh, see something weird?" Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, Community Labs is unfortunately the, uh, to be blunt, the cesspool of uh, very weird things, uh, world world creation-wise. So it's definitely, um, it's, yeah, if you're ever interested in looking for weird worlds, just look up the Community Labs on a daily basis. There's over hundreds of worlds uploaded every day to Community Labs. Mm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely an experience. Mm. <laughs> One of my favorite old pastimes when I first started VR chat was I'd go to world tabs and look up the weirdest things on purpose just to see what people create under those weird things. And I wouldn't look for the, the obvious NSFW stuff. It'd be like pudding and I'd see what kind of weird shit's in there. And I just type in random words and random bullshit just to see what pops up. It was, that was, that's always a fun time. You can find some weird shit in there too. You, you think it's something innocuous. Oh, look, this is a fireworks world. Nope. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> one of the uh, one of the best worlds when it comes to randomization, um, at least in my opinion, and it's a, it's an actual proper world. Um, it gets updated like almost every month or so. Uh, it's called I think it's called the Normal Elevator, made by Hens. Um, and I've gotten to meet Hens, and he's he's a he's a character to say the least. Um, oh, almost, almost as much of a character as Raptor over here, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm um, not that bad. What the hell are you talking about? What are Raptor? you talking about, man? I would do There's nothing. 800 what? sound clips and 200 episodes that say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, it's like, you know, and it, you're thinking of like Ryan with, uh, you know, Leon. Leon. Your your twin brother Leon, right? Mm, yes, in future life. I have a twin too. There's three of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah three of us. Three of you. Sorry. Yeah, I uh, found my twins. You, you get, you get. Keep so going. with the normal elevator, you know, it's just an elevate. Like it's a small square elevator, and it'll go to floors, and all the floors are just completely random shit posts. Um, and you can, some of them, you can like walk out of the elevator and experience it. Some of them, you have to stay in the elevator. Sometimes, uh, an entity will like jump scare you. Like it, it's completely randomized. Um, and you know, it's, it updates every like month or a couple months. I don't know the exact time frame, but, um, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of, uh, random worlds out there. And I'd say that's definitely one of them. If you check it like once every couple of months. Like just like oh yeah that's the thing let's go see what's new what what new floors are there and uh, yeah it's, it's goofy <laughs> you know for random worlds I don't remember what it was called but it's I think it's a Russian meme it's just a uh, it's just a bright ass white room with a dancing cow playing the dancing cow Russian meme and that's all it was and I don't know how I found it but it was just a I enjoyed the world. It was kind of funny in a mirror that makes your PC want to cry. At least at the time I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Indeed. So thank you very much, Novid, for joining us this last hour. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to sit down with you. So thank you for your time. Yeah. Yes, no, indeed. Thank you for having me. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it was an honor to be on the Metaverse DJ, and uh, eventually, once Abby fares over, because uh, that's a whole thing. Oh uh, shit! I I do. Here we go. At some point, want to get you guys on the Novid Notes podcast if you guys are willing. More than willing. We'd oh be on. yeah. Why not? Willing. I hope your um, I hope your audience is ready some from fucking weird shit and rambling now. Yeah. I hope you have oh, a lot no, of time on <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm 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 very excited. Um I'm very excited now uh, that you guys are more willing. Um cuz mm-hmm. I think I'll say a lot of my community knows who you guys are um and they're very they're very passionate about your guys' content and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um I I I give you guys high praise over in my Discord server like almost oh. quite frequently, so well, thank um, you very much. We I'll appreciate say, it. It means a lot. Thank yeah, you. no. Mm-hmm. Brief. Yeah. I wonder if they take say, the blue uh, pill. I don't know. I like the red pill. 
Oh boy. <laughs> no, it's not a political <laughs> thing. I'm just being contrary because Raptor said blue pill. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, 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 no. Uh, That'd uh, be the op- opposite side, yeah. Mm, well, again. yeah, I was going to say, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, especially episode seven with Show Pow. Uh, we, we both, we both, at many points in the video, we both shouted you guys out. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Shows a shows a Brilliant. humble little thing. Mm. Ah, Show Poe it. is an amazing person, as are you. Where yes, can the is. audience come find you if they wish to find you? Um, so there's a few places um, in particular with uh, me, my personal projects. Uh, I do have a link tree uh, that essentially goes to my YouTube, my Twitter, my TikTok. Um, all of those. It's all nobid player except for TikTok, it's nobid player vrc um that's the only one that's different because unfortunately um TikTok was being weird with the regular name it, it happens um but twitter nobid player youtube nobid player um pretty much any social media besides the only one i don't have is blue sky uh and uh instagram those are the only two i don't have because i don't care for instagram and i haven't looked into blue sky enough but um Nine times out of ten, you can see me wandering group public worlds in VR chat. Um, in particular, um, uh, segue. Sorry, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna at least promote this. Um, so one of the conventions I work for uh, is known as Avi Fair. Uh, so from April 5th to April 21st, I don't know when this episode's gonna release, so we'll f- see how it is. Uh, so April 5th to April 21st. Um, Look up Avi Fair. Uh, there'll be group public instances for all the events that we're holding. Um, feel free to come up and meet me, talk to me. You know, you know, I, I love meeting new people, um, which is one of the reasons why I started the podcast. You know, come meet me, come talk to me. Like I'm more than willing to hang out uh, as long as I'm not stupid swamped, because it does happen. Uh, um, but yeah, no, you know, those. That's probably where you can all find me. And Spotify. I forgot Spotify. No vid notes on Spotify. That's the other one. <laughs> well, go please check him out. Novid's a wonderful person that we've been able to get to meet and talk to since we've initially linked up. And before mm-hmm. I pass it to you, we'll see you in the metaverse. Raptor, you know the thing. Oh, boy. Yes, we do. Well, folks, like you say, it's great to meet new people and have a great old time, even if they're new friends, old friends friends you're bumping heads with and everything else like this and the laughs you have and the funny ones you make along the way give them hell and like i say fuck this i'm going swimming